right over to real estate. Rogers Healy is with us, owner CEO of the Rogers Healy Companies. To talk about, we got in the mortgage applications earlier. We did see requests falling. We're seeing still prices for new home sales um, quite high. Rates have been climbing for mortgages. Tell me about the environment. Uh, it's, it's what you'd expect. I mean, obviously, there's other factors that come into play. But, yeah, I mean, real estate historically is really, really seasonal, especially residential. But we have seen an 18-month run of it being busy, 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 busy. But right now, we have a shortage, as we've had for the last year and a half, but we also have a shortage of land. So we're, we're just seeing unprecedented territories, but there's no end in sight as far as the amount of demand is concerned that, that, that's happening right now. Is every real estate agent getting tons and tons of calls? I mean, I know the demand is hot, but not every agent has to be busy, right? I mean, there's still sort of an art of selling and closing a deal, right? Yeah, you either ask the best or the worst person this. I, I, I think that what you do when you can't find another job is you get into real estate. And I think a lot of people think it's going to be really, really easy. But this is probably the hardest time to ever be a real estate agent successfully because even the statistics pre-pandemic, pre-shifting of everything, average realtor lasts less than four months. And right now, if you can make a living in real estate, especially residential, you're great. And I, and I think, yeah, people are getting called nonstop but to secure a client and to get them to actually go transact. And a lot of times in a place like Dallas, overpay for what it's on the market for, that's hard. And I think that right now it's becoming more of a business versus a hobby or something you just post on social media and hope your phone is going to ring. But it has definitely gotten tougher and in a city like Dallas that's overly competitive. If you survive and if you thrive, you're great at your job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you really paint the right picture because it's just not, it, it's not like it just works by itself. I mean, it does take a lot of um, know-how and getting the right customers to the right houses that they would want, things like that. That being said, um, as you see different areas that are doing well, for investors, um, is real estate a good investment? I think this is the best time to ever invest in real estate. And I think, obviously, the people that were speaking before me that are way more intelligent than me and have way more degrees, you know, you can just see the stock market is volatile always, but even right now, it's probably the most volatile we've seen in a few years. And so I think people are going to take their money out of stuff that goes like this and maybe take it as something that might not have the jumps, but it's going to be a tangible investment. And that's real estate. And I think that, too, people love the idea of being a mini hotel icon and having Airbnb or short-term rental options in places like Dallas and Nashville and Atlanta and Houston and you know, all the places we keep hearing about. So I do think that from an investment standpoint, this is literally the best time to ever invest in real estate, especially single family detached properties, because the one thing we can't build no matter how hard we try is more land. Right, right. Look, I know you're not a stock picker per se, but I mean, there must be color and a lot that you've been hearing in the field about Home Depot, Lowe's, Sherwin-Williams, furniture, um, what kind of themes are you seeing that are still very, very hot so we can sort of attribute them to the right retailers that may have some people going in there? Sure. You might be the first person I ever asked this to an advertising major, but I would go and put my money in the stock market in residential real estate-related stocks, paint, furniture, lumber, anything that has to do with home building or home renovation because we have the millennials driving our market for probably the next decade or longer. In 2022, we have more weddings this year than any year other than 1983, which means in the next two to three years, we'll probably see a baby boom, which means people need more place, more space to live in their place. So yeah, I'm big on Lowe's, I'm big on Home Depot, I'm big on the production builders as well, because a lot of these people are now building master plan communities for lease, which means they still need to go and make the product. So yeah, I think Home, Home Depot, Lowe's, et cetera, are always going to be safe bets for the market for the next decade or so. Is there enough room for all the players? No, absolutely not. As, as far as realtors are concerned, no way. A city like Dallas, we have 70,000 people doing this and maybe 5,000 doing it you know, successfully. But you know, I, I think what's going to happen is we're going to see this happen where the trend has always been location, but it's going to shift towards affordability. It's what I've been talking about for now three years, where people that did not save their money in their early 20s want to buy in their late 20s, early 30s, and where they yeah. thought they could afford to purchase they literally can't. So we're going to see, you know, just this game being played all across the country. But the only people that really benefit are the real estate agents that don't give up. Tell me, uh, this is the last thought. Uh, when we talk about the money, dollars and cents of things, I mean, people generally 
from what I remember, put 20% down, but now um, you certainly have high, high prices coupled with if they want to get a mortgage, they have to pay more to the bank than they do to the owner who's selling. Um, are people still putting about 20% down and are they clamoring about higher mortgage rates? I think they're getting creative. And again, if interest rates right now, say they're three and a half percent, that's still historically the lowest we've had other than the last two years. So, you know, I, I really think it's a beggars can't be true situation because on top of that too, what I was mentioning earlier, rental rates are at an all time high. So you either don't go, you can live in your favorite place as a renter and never have the equity to go purchase or you purchase, have a little bit higher interest rate, a little bit less cash, maybe buy the sofa that you wanted uh, the day you moved in, maybe you buy it six months later and you start to actually learn to save, but that's what we're having happen right now, you know, to scale because people have always just kind of lived, you know, paycheck to paycheck or living on credit card debt, but now they're learning how to be adults, all people, not just millennials, people my age, people my parents' age, and I think we're seeing these trends kind of take care of themselves and it's happening all across our country. Yeah, reallocation and some discipline, and it really could be a great investment. Rogers Healy, always great to chat with you. Thank you very much, giving us a good look there at all things home and home sales. Rogers Healy, owner and CEO of the Rogers Healy Companies. Thank you.